Hey guys, what's up? So, I've been obsessed with Slay the Spire lately, but I needed something new. I dug deep and found 10 games that might be even better. Let's check them out. First up is Balatro. If you love deck building but want a break from the usual monsters and bosses, this one's for you. Instead of fighting enemies, you're playing poker. You use your cards to make hands like a flush or three of a kind, and the higher you score, the further you go. Plus, there's a joker system that adds multipliers to your hands, which makes every move feel super strategic. It's a nice balance of luck and planning, perfect for an afternoon when you just want to relax and have some fun. Next, we've got Monster Train. Imagine Slay the Spire, but instead of climbing a tower, you're defending a train heading straight into hell. Enemies attack from multiple floors, and you gotta place creatures and cast spells to stop them from reaching your pyre at the top. If they destroy it, it's game over. What makes this game really fun is how you build your deck by pledging to different demonic factions, adding new creatures and upgrading cards. It's chaotic in the best way possible. If you want something a bit different, check out Moonlighter. This game splits its time between dungeon crawling and running a shop. By day, you're selling items you collect in the dungeons, setting prices based on customer reactions. By night, you head back into the dungeons to fight monsters and find more loot. It's a cool mix of action and strategy, and the balance between exploring and shopkeeping keeps things interesting. Definitely worth a try if you like a bit of variety. Next up is Steam World Quest, Hand of Gilgamech. It's like Slay the Spire, but with a lot more story and humor. You control a group of heroes on an adventure, and you don't lose all your progress when you fail, which is nice if you want something a bit more forgiving. The game's art style is colorful and fun, and the turn-based card battles are really smooth. If you're in the mood for a deck builder with a lighthearted story and characters, this one's a great pick. Let's talk about Dicey Dungeons. This game is wild. You play as a living dice, competing in Lady Luck's crazy game show. You roll dice to activate different abilities, and depending on your roll, you might deal a ton of damage, or none at all. There are six characters to play, each with their own unique abilities, which keeps the game feeling fresh. It's quirky, fun, and full of surprises. If you enjoy games where luck plays a big role, this one's for you. Don't let the cute art style fool you, Wild Frost is tough. In this game, you're trying to stop an endless winter, and you'll lead a tribe of warriors into battle. Your leader's health and buffs are randomized at the start of each run, and if they go down, it's game over. So you have to use your companions wisely to protect them. It's definitely inspired by Slay the Spire, but the artworks and mechanics give it a unique feel. Plus, it looks like something straight out of a cartoon, which I love. Here's something a bit different. Guild of Dungeoneering. Instead of controlling the hero, you're actually building the dungeon around them. You use cards to place rooms, enemies, and treasure guiding your hero through the adventure. The hand-drawn art style is super charming, and the game's got this fun, light-hearted vibe. It's a nice change of pace if you want something less serious, but still strategic. Next, we've got Card Quest. It might not look fancy, but this game has some pretty deep strategy. You'll be fighting your way through an undead-filled city and a dangerous mountain, and your weapon and armor choices actually determine which cards you get to use. It's not as flashy as some other games, but if you like tactical combat and don't mind a simpler art style, it's a solid option. Coming in at number 9 is The Solitaire Conspiracy. If you're a fan of classic solitaire but want something a bit more strategic, this game's got you covered. It's a spy-themed version where different suits have unique powers that can help or challenge you. The story's light and a bit goofy, but it's a lot of fun. If you like puzzle games with a twist, give this one a go. Last but not least, we've got Across the Obelisk. This is a co-op roguelike where you and your friends create a team of heroes and take on a world full of challenges. There are 16 characters to unlock and over 500 cards to build your deck, so there's a ton of room for customization. The decisions you make during the game change the world around you, which adds an extra layer of depth. It's a bit slower to get going, but once you find a strategy that works, it's a blast, especially if you're playing with friends. So, which one are you going to try first? Or maybe you've played one of these before. Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the list.